G'day, I'm Mark from Self Sufficient Me and it's a beautiful sunny day here for our first week of spring and there's a lot going on. It's really windy today so I'll try my best to struggle and cope with that wind so that it doesn't disrupt the video too much. But there's several things that I wanted to show you and I meant to show you this midweek around about Wednesday and I did a lot of shooting and a lot of gobbing off. The problem was I didn't I didn't turn my mic on, so I had no microphone. And when I went and played it back, you know, all excited on how I was going to edit this video out, there was no, there was no sound. So uh, that was a bit of a bummer. But here I am. I'm not going to give up. I'm still going to put out a video this weekend, but my midweek video is going to be the end of the week. But like I said, there's lots I want to show you. So let's get into it. Okay, the first thing I wanted to show you guys is, see how I'm standing underneath this grapevine? It's still in its dormant stage. This is the one that I did a video on a few years ago on how to prune and grow a grapevine off your house. And it's going great guns, but pruning, speaking of, needs to be done all over the place here at the moment. And I really should have got my pruning done through winter before spring had sprung. But anyway, this has got to be pruned back and all my fruit trees have to be pruned back as well. These things I'm going to mention in this video are things that you're going to see in videos coming up. And then you'll be able to later go, oh yeah, yeah, I remember that video Mark done of all those several madness things that were going on in his yard at the time. So that was how that turned out, etc., etc. So that's the aim of this video is to give you an update and, and also really just show you what's going on at the moment because it is a busy time, the start of spring, even in a subtropical climate. Remember, we're coming out of winter, which is a growing time for us as well, particularly with all those salad crops. We grow all year. It's just that it's different crops that we grow. I'm just going to grab the camera and we'll go around and have a look. Yeah, that twirly kangaroo thing has been getting a beating going around and around on top of our clothesline here. Boy, that must be 20, 20 years old or something. I was here way before we got here. Anyway, the citrus starts at this part of the orchard and goes all the way back. All these trees will need to be pruned, even though they're starting to flower. I've got to prune them. But uh, they're just beautiful. The lime tree, which you've seen my lime video, where you may have flowering again and small fruit, it's always in fruit. The Maya lemon, I love the Maya lemon flowers, they're different, They've got that purple to them. Purple tinge, look at the, the bees just love them. The Valencia orange, which is our last orange tree that we use, we leave the fruit on the Valencia. I've mentioned this many times, but just look how many flowers are on it. It is just pumping, pumping with flowers. We've got a few pests turning up. If you follow my videos, you know that I don't get too wrapped around the axles when it comes to pest management. You see a few aphids on the tree, I monitor it. I watch and see how many predator insects there are around because that's important. Things like the ladybirds and the hoverflies. If there's a lot of them around, I generally will just wait and I won't you know, break out the organic pesticide or organic sprays. So I'll monitor this tree. I see that it's got some clusters of aphids and that on it. And if it gets too overwhelming, then I might actually spray it. But I'll spray it probably right at the end of the day when I know there's no bees around, or maybe even after it's finished flowering. You know, I want to keep the predator insects and the pollinating insects in mind whenever I do any type of spraying, even if it's organic. These larger trees, they can take a little bit of pest infestation. But on the younger trees, if you've got all the new spring growth that's getting eaten by bugs, well then, yeah, it's probably a good idea to hit it straight away so that that young tree isn't challenged when it's just trying to grow and become you know, a good stable tree. Otherwise, nine times out of 10, it fixes itself up. Okay, let's not gob off too much more about citrus. We've got plenty that's going. I can see 
that our mandarin is, is flowering, which is a good sign. Last year we got no fruit out of it because it's a biannual fruiter. Uh, so it looks like we're going to get a good harvest out of that this season. We normally do in the second year. Washington Orange behind that and several others. But anyway, let's move on to the asparagus. How cool is this? All the asparagus coming up. I just love this time of year at the start of spring. The asparagus, it never fails. Within that first week, boom, it just starts shooting up. This one was a little early because we've had some hot days through winter. So there was a few sprigs of asparagus that were coming through earlier than I expected. Well, it prompted me into getting this bed prepared and knocking down all the old growth, remulching and getting stuck into it before all these started coming through. Just wonderful. I love eating asparagus fresh, even raw. There's nothing better than fresh asparagus on the table. And being spring means tomatoes. Look at how green and fresh these tomatoes look. This whole bed is cherry tomatoes. And the reason why I'm concentrating on them now is because it is coming into spring, summer, and it's fruit fly season. And the fruit flies then target all large tomatoes. So even though you can grow them here, and I've got a couple on the go, to be honest, I have to watch them because otherwise the fruit fly will get them. And some of the larger varieties, if they're growing well into you know, mid-spring, I'm going to have to start netting them, otherwise we'll lose every one of them. Whereas the cherry tomatoes, even the pears and the, the ones you know, plum size, they don't get hit at all. In this bed here, I grew tomatoes all winter. And they've, they've just about had it now. And they're dying off because they've had their season. I've still got a couple of larger ones, like these black Russians or black cream. But those little spots on there worry me because that looks like a fruit fly sting. Sometimes they don't, the maggot doesn't grow inside. Uh, but uh, when it does, it ruins the whole fruit. It's not that easy growing tomatoes through winter here. You have to look after them, make sure they're in a good warm spot. As long as you start them when it's still warm and let them grow into the colder time of the year, you can do it in the subtropics, no worries. But yeah, the best time of year is coming into spring now and uh, they should give us some really great tomatoes all through mid spring and into summer when then it'll get too hot and the tomatoes will die back again. So essentially it's sort of two times a, a year where I get the tomatoes up to speed. And it's similar with the eggplant. Normally I start my eggplants off late winter so that they're getting a good start and then they grow into spring and into summer. And they do really well, but these ones self-seeded, several of them that I've got in the garden at the moment. And they grew all through winter and gave us eggplants in winter and now they're picking up again, getting their second wind. So I don't think I need, even need to grow or plant any new eggplants for this season. I'm really impressed and I'm definitely going to keep the seed out of these guys and sow them again because it seems like we're going to get eggplant all year round. We've got a couple more over here as well. So when you, when you get a variety in your garden that sort of just pops up and does well at an unusual time of the year well then save that seed because it's adapting to your garden and those are the type of plants that you want so now moving on to the cucumbers and the beans that i wanted to talk about the beans are over here but they're it's a similar type of concept here's the cucumbers now these cucumbers you'll notice there's no trellis that's because they're bush cucumbers they'll only get a couple of feet high and the intent is see this round bed the intent is for the plants to grow up and then eventually under their own weight they're going to flop down and they're going to hang to about half or three quarters of the way down that bed. So you're going to get a cascading effect of bush cucumbers and I think that is going to be really cool. It's going to be less maintenance and uh, I'm thinking it's going to be a great growing method to show you guys. Hopefully it works. In the centre there I'm going to plant some maybe some chilies or capsicums or uh, you know uh, sweet peppers but uh, we'll see but uh, I haven't decided exactly what I'm going to put in the bed there yet uh, but 
I reckon it's going to work a treat. Maximise the growing space because you've got plants cascading down, able to plant more other plants in the centre there, and plus you're limiting your gardening workload because you don't have to constantly tie them up or trellis them up. I think it's going to work well. And they've got the same concept going over here with these beans. These are dwarf beans, they're not growing up beans like these were, and they needed to be trellised. These are old purple beans. I'll keep the seeds for that and we'll grow them again soon. But here, these are dwarfs and you can see they're getting to a, a fair size. They'll get a little bigger than that. And then I'm just gonna train them to flop over. They'll get probably two foot high, they'll flop over, they'll get down to about there. And I'll be able to plant other things around the inside here. Like I've already got some coriander, um, some other herbs, that's the uh, flat leaf coriander. And I've got a tomato in the middle here. The last thing I wanted to show you or talk about is the uh, zucchinis here. You can see that they grew all through winter. If you watch my videos, you'd know that I did a video on pickling zucchinis. Got a few still left, so it's, it's chugging along, but it is getting towards the end of life, these plants here. But what I wanted to say was I tasted some of that lacto-fermented zucchinis that I showed you in the video. And I'll tell you what, they came up a treat. They were absolutely beautiful. Lessons learnt on the larger ones, I wouldn't keep the seeds and the centre because they went a little mushy, but not, not out of hand mushy. But I'd say a better way to pickle them would be in strips or take out the seeds in the middle and cut them in halves and half slices without the seeds. And they'd probably pickle more crunchier and better than that way. Uh, but apart from that, they are going to be great. Those pickled zucchinis in curry dishes, just as a side, or mixed in um, with your favorite dip, you know, maybe mixed with some soft cheese and turn it into a beautiful lacto zucchini dip, which we like to do with all sorts of lacto fermented foods. And the last thing I wanted to show you guys was down the back here, we've got a duck that's sitting on her eggs. Anyway, I took some footage of that, so let's have a look at that now. Well, I've just found out that she is sitting on two sets of eggs, the one over here and one inside the chicken coop. I accidentally walked in on her, that's why she's upset. She seems to be settling down a bit. Here comes the drake. I've stepped back out of the way. Drake's coming in, say hello. She's now gone and started to eat some lettuce that I put down. There she is. I won't disturb her. So we'll have a look in here. Oh, so, mm, there's only two eggs. She's in there eating. I might go and have a look at her nest. Okay, so it's one, two, three, four. Yeah, it is. There is eight. There's eight eggs there. That was a good guess. Nice little nest made up of twigs and sticks. She's done well. They're all off down to the dam now, but I still reckon it's going to be amazing if she actually produces any ducklings at all out of that nest. But we'll see. Have a look at this mango behind me. Isn't it fantastic? When I do my pruning that I was talking about at the beginning of the video, I probably won't hit any of these smaller mango trees, but I am gonna really smash the larger mango tree and cut it right back. That's a bowen over there. This one here, I think this one's a qualm or maybe a glen, but I'm not too sure. I'd have to have a look at my notes, but it is in beautiful flower. I think it's the best I've seen the mangoes flower for many years here. So hopefully we'll get a good harvest this summer. Anyway, that's the end of this update video or show you what's going on video and show you what's coming up in the future video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to give a thumbs up if you did because I can do more of these type of update videos that are a bit more ad lib 
rather than the structured ones, which I am going to bring out a more scripted video this weekend as well. So that's maybe tomorrow or the next day, you'll see another one from me. How cool is that? Don't forget to share it as well. Visit the website selfsufficientme.com. I just wrote an article about acreage lifestyle and living. You might be interested in reading that. And subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye for now. Thank you.